Hola, Lodgecasters. Bienvenidos a Lodgecast, el podcast oficial de gentlemensavenue.com. <laughs> wait, wait, what what is up with that intro? Let's try that again. Hey, Lodgecasters, welcome to the Lodgecast, the official podcast of gentlemensavenue.com. I'm Mr. M, your host. We're being recorded right now in Whittier, California, at the Lodge, a.k.a. my garage. All right, folks, this is an unexpected episode. This is kind of like totally off the cuff, last minute, but, uh, you know, there's no method to my madness. Uh, there's no box here. The LodgeCast functions as a living, breathing organism, okay? Like I said before, this is a community. It's a community for everyone. And, uh, you know, it's been a crazy week. Uh, just this last week, we filmed, we released the, actually the episode four days ago from the filming. Today's uh, February 26, 2017. So four days ago, we released the pilot. And uh, a week ago, to date, we filmed the pilot. So this is a little bit out of sequence uh, from what I normally wanted, but uh, like I said, uh, there is no box here and uh, this episode we have a, there'll be a few episodes in between the pilot and this episode airing. So this episode will air later after two episodes. Hopefully I confused you enough. If I didn't, well then uh, sit back and just wait. I'll confuse you some more. Yeah, this morning it's been a rainy morning. Uh, for a minute there, I thought, you know what? It's really cold. It's been raining and, and it's going to let up, right? The sun is out. We'll be good to go. Uh, but it started raining again as our guest got here to the set. And so uh, we're going to be just uh, having a good time today. And uh, as you know, in Gentleman's Avenue, uh, one thing that uh, I've been fortunate in my travels and, and through not only social media, because obviously in social media, you're able to travel, right? You're able to to virtually go places where, you, you know, you, you'll never be or at the moment you just can't be. But uh, locally, I've had the privilege to meet an individual that's just a really stand up guy. And, uh, you know, there's some people that you hope to forget when you meet them. And then there's others that just are unforgettable. And, uh, you know, and just cool as hell and a stand-up guy. And uh, the individual we have here today is, is one of those type of folks, you know, just one of those people that you meet that you just know, you know, their their intentions are good and, and they're, you know, they're not out there just trying to, you know, screw everybody. And they, you know, have a bad reputation. This folk, this individual has a, a great reputation. And uh, today he's brought a few uh, friends along with him. And um, I'd, I'd like to invite Tim and his guest to our set. Come on in, guys. Hola, buenos dias. Buenos dias, how's that? All right, so for those of you who don't know, uh, Tim, we have Tim here from Syndicate Barbershop, and we also have, go ahead and introduce yourself. Damian Flores from Bravos. And? Alexander Reyes de Bravos. Mm -hmm. So, Tim? Tim from Syndicate Barbershop. Now, Tim is, uh, I, I think Tim and I met maybe about in 2013. Yeah. Um, we were doing the book, and right. uh, I don't remember exactly who actually inter turned me on or, or said, hey, you got to check out this shop. Maybe it was Jimmy. It might have been Jimmy. Um, and we went down there and we did a, a photo shoot for our book, uh, Revival of the Traditional Barbershop, which is still in progress. And you guys, a Syndicate Barbershop, Tim and Chris are the owners, right? Did, yeah, he's my partner. Yeah, and you guys- Did are you just put out the cover recently? Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah, it looked good. <laughs> yeah, we just got- Was that the cover? Yeah, that's the yeah. Uh, the final cover. You and got some uh, good people on the cover there. <laughs> Especially the two guys sitting in front of the shop, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Which is Tim and Chris. <laughs> um, you guys are located right there, what, on uh, Second Street? No, Broadway and Broadway. Temple. Yeah, Broadway and Temple. And, it, you know, and the, the, the thing I like about that area of Long Beach is, uh, you know, it's not that, you know, like you guys have a couple bars, you know, a couple uh, cool shops in that area. It's not yeah. just the <clears throat> bars, you know what I mean? Uh, all Lace Street, right? Yeah, it's somewhere in between downtown and Yuppieville, <laughs> I guess. A couple streets yeah, from yeah, the beach. Yeah. Oh yeah, really close to the beach. Yeah, it's and a cool area. So what? What? Tim? Tim uh, texted me. I guess maybe about three or four days ago, and was like, "Hey, you know, we got some barbers here in town. They're visiting my shop. They're from Mexico." And uh, he's like, "Do you speak Spanish?" And I said, "Yes, I do." And uh, he had me on speakerphone at that moment, and so I was able to to talk to the um, to Alex, right? 
Yeah, well, he, I mean, Damien. Damien and Alex. And Alex. Okay. Yeah. So I was able to speak with them. And Damien, where are you guys from? Why don't you tell the guy, the, the folks where you guys are from? Well, we are from Monterrey, Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, we are located on downtown Monterrey. And, well, we we'll just visit California and see what's going on. What's the name of your barbershop? <laughs> Bravos. Bravos. Yeah, that's the name of the barbershop that, that I, I own. Okay, and were you, so that's the name of your guys. What, 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 what does bar Bravos mean? Uh, it's just a word that we, we just want to put the name like something hard, mm -hmm. something for gentlemen, because this is a traditional barbershop. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of... Um, a, a hard word like to remember the bravos the the strong guys the strong barbers from from mexico so bravos bravos means brave right yeah yeah so, so but it's also like macho right yeah I, we want to put the name that remember us like a mexican like machos like like strong guys like it, you know what i mean like <laughs> I'm not as strong, but well, well Tim, Tim, Tim just <laughs> Tim just felt up, Damien, but I believe it was consensual. <laughs> I'm working on it, man. I'm working. Um, and so we have uh, Damien and Alex. Yeah, Alex. Alex is, is he's work with me. Mm -hmm. He's the guy. He's staying with me when I start the shop mm -hmm. because I start alone uh, on my garage in my house. Mm -hmm. So I started like on the downtown and I invited Alex because he's a good barber. So he's coming with me. He, we, are, we are just started like travel to around the world. And we started in California just to know what's going on with the barbers around the world. Okay. So uh, uh, um, <laughs> where's yeah. that new tat? <laughs> uh, we got a tattoo from, from California. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, for those of you not, uh, watching the, the vodcast and I, I i always recommend that you log into our website and watch it because uh some of the stuff is great to listen to on the podcast but uh, go ahead and show the the camera go ahead and, and show them your tattoo it says cali tour yeah we we want to get a i don't know a memory from our trip to california and i'm just ask a team that if he knows somebody who can make the tattoo at the middle of the night, so. <laughs> <laughs> Who did it, Tim? Who tattooed uh, my him? My friend Ryan Bloom. Okay. He's yeah. a badass tattoo. So. <laughs> yeah. Did, did you get one? Did, did Al, uh, Alex get one? Alex also, yeah. Alex, let's see. Let's see both of them. Both of you lift up your arms and show it to the camera. Um, look at that. Yeah, both of them have this sick. beautiful, <laughs> it, it's kind of like a Sailor Jerry-esque kind of like sunset with a right. you know, palm tree, right? It's yeah. real classic <clears throat> Americana. Yeah. Uh, did you guys learn how to ask for a hamburger? Uh, Alex, <laughs> that's, that's the word for Alex. So yeah, Alex, can can you say it on the mic? Get a little closer and go ahead and say it. Puedes decir, puedes decir que quieres una hamburguesa en inglés. Ah. Can you <laughs> give me a hamburger, please? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I I joke with them because on uh, social media, th at Instagram, their uh, handle is bravos dot mx yeah on Bravo's instagram mm -hmm. so I, I looked them up because i asked tim yesterday about you know i wanted to do a little research on them and i i saw a video of uh them announcing their tour to california yeah, that was a good one and uh i have mr alex here <laughs> i think he starts off saying in spanish you know he wants to <laughs> to say uh, i want a hamburger in english so uh, it, it appears he succeeded um <laughs> They texted me last night at midnight and said, "Why didn't you tell us about Five Guys?" <laughs> that was the, they said it was the best hamburger. Well, you know, I, I'm, I took them to In and Out. I guess that wasn't good, good enough. No, you know what? <laughs> if you guys want a really, really, really outstanding hamburger here in Whittier, California, Big D's Burgers is the best. Oh man, <laughs> where's that downtown? It, no, it's right up the street. I could throw a rock from here and hit Big D's. Oh, okay, right off of uh, Whittier Boulevard and um, I believe Broadway or Norwalk, Norwalk. And anyways, yeah, it's it's their shakes. They come they, the shake. They bring it to you on a platter. Oh wow! I mean, it, it's a shake, and then there's a whole experience around it. <laughs> oh, my daughter would love that. I, I would love that. No, seriously, bro. The, the burgers there, um, like I said, Big D's Burgers here in Whittier. But um, so, where have you guys gone, uh, uh, Damien? Where have you guys gone? You guys came to California. Oh yeah. Twenty cent. You said you wanted to do a tour, right? You're like, I want to come to California. What do you want to come to California for? Oh, we just want to know the culture, 
that mm -hmm. we loved before we came here, like skateboard, surfer, barber mm -hmm. shops, low riders. So we wanna know the real California. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, mm, like following the Instagram from Syndicated, mm -hmm. and I see all the stuff in that uh, in that place in Syndicated. So that's why uh, I wanna met. Uh, team mm -hmm. and he gave us a tour a really good tour in california to see the real <laughs> california <laughs> okay I, I, yeah I, I think there's a little little something implied there but we won't we won't get into that but uh, yeah we I, i took him down to took him to compton <laughs> um, you know the welcome to compton signs when you go into town yeah yeah yeah, yeah. had him jump up there take some pictures took him to some old uh Took him to some old uh, car dudes out there, okay. old gangbangers, and kind of gave him the feel of Compton. Mm -hmm. Took him to downtown LA and what else? In and out, got tattooed late night, <laughs> smoked a lot of cigarettes. Okay, so, you know, you I heard what you said. You wanted, um, you know, barber, skateboarder you know tattoos all that so and, and that's the guy next to you right here mr tim you know <laughs> yeah. he, he fits the bill tim yeah. is uh you know he's, he's a good guest yeah no you know in in, in, in today's You're the guest ah uh, yeah so what is <laughs> host <laughs> the host yeah, yeah sorry yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and okay back to barbering so you guys you you've been how long have each of you been barbering uh alex is almost nine years and i'm almost four years and a half something Okay, so you guys have been barbering for a while. Mm, yeah. And what made you guys open? What made you open the shop? Who owns the shop? Is it you? Yeah, or? I'm, I'm the owner. What made you open the shop? Um, Mexico. They are a, a traditional barber since since all the time from the old guys, but they like disappearing in in a time like on the 90s, and on 200. So they just start like salons, mm -hmm. just for like, you know, for the ladies or, or the boys, but it's not, they were not a place for a boys, for a gentleman. And mm, we wanna, I was going in, I, I was in Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. and I saw all the culture, all the, the stores, about everything. And I said, well, we don't have anything like that in Monterey, in my hometown. So that's why I started Bravos. Like, I like the the, the culture from for, of barbering. So I started like, do a place with a high level, like, because Mexico, we got talent. Do, do you have to go to the barber college in Mexico or you could just open up shop and start cutting? Yeah, that, that's that's what is Mexico now. Mm, you don't go to the college, mm -hmm. just starting with your friends on your garage. And, but you, it's the pen of, of the barber. If you wanna learn more, mm -hmm. you have to travel, you have to learn with other barbers. So that's what we are doing now. We, are, we need a school, but we, we, we need to see the reality of the barbering. So that's how we. So you guys. It. So you guys started where you you started at home with friends, and did you go to barber college? No. Okay. I did don't. you did don't have you? to in Mexico? You don't have to. I guess. Have so to. it's kind of the saying. apprentice, pretty much like an apprentice uh, relationship, or right? Or start in your garage like he did. Yeah, and and then you 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 you're now looking for. Did you open it straight out of your garage, or did you go watch somebody? No, I started up to on, on my garage, and then just. Rented a place and started cutting customers. Yeah, oh, that's and, they loved, and, yeah, yeah, and, that's... and, and they loved it. Yeah, and they loved it. How we started. So this is this is the start. And Alex, Alex, his mom is a. Uh, he cut the hair, but the for the woman, I don't stylist. know, mm -hmm. a stylist. stylist yeah. So <clears throat> he learned from from he was a, a young guy, you know. Okay. So he started at the age of third, tres, verdad. He started out at 13. Now he's 20, almost almost 22. Wow. So that's why he's like eight years barbering. And and yeah, uh, in Mexico also, <clears throat> we have barbering, but we had a lot of guys that come from Texas. Mm -hmm. But like 
a different barber in like you know mm, mm, I don't know how how you call like it like lines and designs yeah and like urban urban yeah, barbers urban, urban barbers. barbers yeah yeah and they they were in Mexico like 15 years ago 20 I don't know mm -hmm. but like a traditional barber they're just started like four years five years there's only a handful of them from what I've gathered in Mexico right now yeah there's uh, Armadillo <coughs> Armadillo Barber Shop is oh, down there too they're, they're a good one yeah from Querétaro mm -hmm. I guess because yeah. you guys are from Nuevo León right yeah Nuevo León Nuevo León is your state yeah it's the state Nuevo León in the, in the northeast part of Mexico yeah so you guys are a little closer to Texas and yeah, the Gulf yeah we are like two hours yeah, from yeah, Texas yeah, yeah. and you know Mexico always has a, a a long history just like and maybe i don't know if it's as much as an american cinema we're in mexico right now <laughs> <laughs> california is mexico yes <laughs> thanks dude thank you <laughs> but uh you know they they had a long tradition of, of mexican film stars you know pedro infante tintan. javier solis tintan i mean every every film star from the 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 silver screen you know was just dapper as hell i mean they looked i mean amazing you know what i mean it's kind of like if every guy could be clark gable and if you wanted to appear in movies back then that's how you looked you looked outstanding and i don't know if you look over here to your left the top individual that's my grandfather now uh, from mexico from the beautiful uh, style of the calisco okay and they you, retouch it with color that's how they did it but you know like they did the, the or did you have it retouched no that's how it was done Wow. original it's an original picture um they did like the plate the plate coloring of yeah. the plates that's cool. uh, but you know that's something and that's probably from like the 40s but that's something in mexico that's always been like this tradition of being you know well groomed was part of like you know be, you know having status within yourself right because yeah. if you don't if you look like a bum you know, like your shame, a, a disgrace to your family. Is that still over there in Mexico in the culture? Mm. I don't know. Have you been to TJ lately? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean. I mean. <laughs> well, it, it disappears a little bit. But yeah, you find some guys like looking like pachucos, mm -hmm. like you say. But yeah, we have people like they, they still like to look like really shine. Mm -hmm. I took them to Greenspan's. Oh yeah, that's oh, yeah. right up that alley. <laughs> Greenspan's. You know what? And there's actually a, a store in Santana too, on Fourth Street. I believe it's called um, Gunther's. No, uh, oh. the Western Wear place. I think it's starts with the R. It might be Roberts or it might be R Western Wear. Mm -hmm. He's been there since like the '60s or '50s. Oh really? Yeah. Like my uncles, everybody used to buy Pendleton's there, and you go in there, it's you know they he still has, sell them and mm -hmm. oh yeah. The yeah, yeah. The original owner's still there. It's a really cool little shop, and uh, but. I think for to see you know what you know Tim for those of you who haven't seen we Tim invited me maybe last year sometime mm -hmm. when two barbers from Japan came nice. uh, it was Hirakawa and Wolfman, Wolfman and uh, South Korea barber uh, Harley right was yeah it? Barber Harley yeah from N2 Rage right. barbershop yep. and so it seems that you know, people when they come into town in Southern California, they're looking to, to syndicate or getting connected with syndicate to get a, you know, that barber culture. Because one of the things about Tim's shop, you know, he has, uh, do you still have that big kind of glass cabinet in the front of the shop? Yeah, full of the old vintage barber oh, shit. Oh, man. And, and that's <clears throat> one thing about Tim. Tim's also, I believe he might, I'm not sure if he might border on being a hoarder yet, but I know yeah. he's huge into antiques. <laughs> if, if you look on his Instagram, he's always selling some antique that I always go, man, I wish I had enough money to buy that. I wish but, you did too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet your wife wishes yeah, that. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, uh, and, and so, you, you looked up Tim. You, did you look him up when you got here or did you already contact him before? Uh, we've been communicating for a minute now. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, is the first time we communicated when you uh, commented on my Insta snap of me pushing the lawnmower with Mexican music behind it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was the first time. Yeah. That, that oh, was I was mowing the yard and I, I, just, <laughs> I just went on Pandora and typed in Mexican music. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. In the first song to come on, I put it on full blast and started mowing the yard. <clears throat> and he replied to it like that was the best group or band around. <laughs> and then more and more Hispanics started chiming in like, 
oh i can't believe you listen to them <laughs> who was it who was it i don't remember which band was but the interesting the, inter the good thing is that like he played our mexican song you know that's why i say that okay, damn <laughs> He's the guy that we have to go to California uh -huh, just uh -huh. to <laughs> chill out, man, you know. <laughs> well, what a, what a way, right, through, yeah, right. through uh, social media. You and know? that's the cool thing about social media. It's the largest platform, um, free promotion, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. advertising. Yep. You meet people. People come from all over the world that I would have never met if it wasn't for Instagram or should I start it on MySpace? Mm -hmm. Then Facebook, now Instagram. But yeah, we, we wouldn't even know each other. No, and that, that's the beauty, right, is is that, it, and it, it brought all of us here together, you know, because I, I think that's, like I said, I might have been through a mutual friend that I met, Tim and Chris, but, you know, it, it's now allowed this, for us to be here sitting down together. Um, you know, we have uh, some individuals, you know, the, these, these folks here from Bravo's Barbershop, and we got Syndicate Barbershop here, and we're here at the Lodgecast. You know, we're able to to join this world together. And and the podcast, really, what it is, is a, it's a community. It's a society within a society for people to tap into, you know, culture, mm. to lifestyles. Yeah. And it doesn't matter, you know, where they're from. And in Mexico, what what's the biggest trend in barbering? What what are the what haircut do you do the most in Mexico? Mm. I think that now is the the undercut, the famous, mm -hmm. the undercut like a skin fade, mm -hmm. with side part and a pompadour. But um, we really like uh, we don't like to do uh, really too much that that haircut. We like to do more like long haircut like like you have, mm -hmm. like with the fenders yeah. on the sides, um, slick backs. So that's what we like to do. Okay, but. We're starting like showing the people in Mexico that there is a lot of haircuts that they that we can do. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference that we want to do in, in our barber shop. That is not just a skin fade, it's, you know. Uh, it's a good haircut. I got it mm -hmm. with me, but that's why we like the barber because um, you can do everything and, and your hair. And we have to do it. We 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 like to do it like in traditional haircuts. Flat tops, flat let's, tops, boogies. Let's hear this guy talk over here. Yeah, I was gonna ask actually. What what are what are your guys? What's what's your favorite haircut to give? ¿Cuál es tu cuál es tu tu favorito? Tu flat corte? top boogie. Flat top boogie. No, that is that. <laughs> you straight out said something that's from a poster. The name, right? Yeah, yeah. We find it in a, in a poster. Like, is that on the Hollywoods one or the Ruzel one? No, that's on the, the Ruzel, right? No, we we find it in the Hollywood. Uh, okay. Oh, is yeah. it on the Hollywood? Yeah, in okay. that in that one. That's why we know the the haircut names, but I don't know in Mexico. I I think maybe I'm not. Uh, Which one's the flat top buggy? <clears throat> it's a flat top <clears throat> with the fenders on the sides, but in the top it's a flat top and a taper in the back. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. That's, that's a, the buggy. Yeah, that's the buggy. The buggy. Well, <laughs> I don't know. With a flat top. <laughs> with a flat top. <laughs> flat top, but we just can't have the buggy now. Yeah. And um, so when when. Is your mom still a, a, a I'm, I'm speaking to uh, Alex here. Is your mom still a stylist? Sigue, sigue tu mamá cortando el pelo. Sí, sí, aún ella todavía está activa. Yeah, she, she's, she's now um, um, cutting hair. She has a, her own salon? <clears throat> she's, a, she's, she's a manager in, in a salon. Now, what does she think when you became, a, you know, a professional barber now? I mean, one thing is to be cutting, you know, with, with Damien here out of a garage, but what, what does she think? Was she... What was your mom saying? What did she think of you? ¿Qué, qué pensó tu mamá cuando empezaste ya como que a cortar el pelo como barbero así ya se puede decir profesional? ¿Qué pensó de ti? ¿Qué piensa de ti estando aquí? No, pues me apoya. Yo creo que ella piensa que puedo llegar bien lejos ya que me empeño en hacer las cosas y me apoya un buen, me echa un chorro de porras para pues, para no quedarme abajo y darle mm -hmm. como debe ser. No, he said that that his mom um, uh, really like what, what he's doing. He's, <clears throat> I don't know how to say, <clears throat> apoyar? Support. Support a yeah. lot. And he's supporting Alex too much, like for the travel. And he's, he's a young guy, he's 21. So mm -hmm. 
he, she she let him like go everywhere just to learn you know because she wanna she wanna see him like go go far you know not just in mexico everywhere no and that's the thing with, with barbering <coughs> is that it's it, it's kind of taken on like a global it's a trend know, it's tre it's trending but you know and this is one thing i'm sure i'm not I'm, these gentlemen here damien and alex know is that and, and i know tim is well well aware of this is barbering the the whole revival worldwide came out of southern california oh yeah i mean there's no other we can't say it of this out. of of a younger of generation. the tattooed barber of right, the right, right. traditional you know checkered flooring yeah i mean no flooring. one reinvented the wheel and they no, had no, checkered no, no, floors no. back then they had the whole obviously everything we're putting in our shops and decorating them no, and, and that died out for a while, and then yeah, and that's the revival. The revival isn't that you're right, you're right. you're creating something. That's the Renaissance. Yeah, Renaissance is you're creating something. Mm. The revival is you're breathing life back. You're bringing back to life, mm. revivir. Yeah, right. Bring back to life, and it came out of Southern California. Mm -hmm. Right. So for for individuals, whether they're from Japan, South Korea, Mexico, Can I know Canada's down here a lot. Um, We're the microscope to the the West Coast. For barbering is pretty much you could say the microscope to the world I'd, oh yeah I'd say. they want to tap into the source <clears throat> and, and even i mean you know god rest his soul jake briggs but you know eric webb mm. still you know is barbering you know eric webb is, is is as close as you could get to the founder of this style of yeah of barbering right him and him and uh him and pedro zermino are mm -hmm. the reasons are the two guys why i'm doing it no oh, yeah and and that's and that's something that you know we, pedro we has a shop or two or three in mexico okay wow he, he owns uh you know him no, no no he owns imperial and oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i'm sorry and I'm razorbacks sorry. In that's Long right Beach. that's right but yeah he opened one or two or yeah. something he threw me like off that. there when you talked about mexico barbershop i was like what wait a minute i thought he was right there in long beach <laughs> <laughs> down the street not too far from me right right around the corner no and and i think that that's uh you know and of course uh you know i always give credit to donnie for for doing you know being an ambassador oh, worldwide yeah. uh for you know pomade innovation after cool grease mm -hmm. and then that's just you know the facts right right but uh you know so to see these individuals here um you know there's another barbershop we were just discussing earlier off camera armadillo barbershop um and it's exciting to see that they're they're transporting you know and, and i'm sure in new mexico back then there was probably really cool barbershops right yeah I mean, traditional barbering, uh, the old chairs, back then they were new at the time, but Mexico had its own style, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, like you say, we, we got a, a different, uh, on, on different actor, actors, like Tintan, Pedro Infante. Mm. So that's, that's- We heard that, Tim. <laughs> oh, shit, sorry. <laughs> that's, that's why Mexico are like on, on, on a good point because they they were looking like good really good they have to look really good to to the movies the haircut the the mustache mm -hmm. so yeah they were a really good good barbering in mexico their shop blew up because they did a, he has a customer a friend that works for what's the beer company uh we were working uh for cerveza sol mm -hmm. they were a big campaign in mexico um the national campaign and they 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 are just um, they are just making a the the history of me mm -hmm. like how it started commercial the yeah, commercial the how it started because I am industrial designer uh, so I quit my job I let it down just to start the barbering thing. Wow! So you gave up a career you had a, you yeah. had a good uh, a respectable quote unquote yeah job. Mm -hmm, yeah and you gave it up to barber yeah i'm just quit uh because which i think is pretty common because a lot of people don't like their nine to five job and it's a huge risk though i mean you know especially in mexico right you're, you're oh yeah you're you're you're, you're kind of like you know headed into deep space right you're not exactly sure it's not like southern california right right you, you can launch there's it lots of options hell there's but there's tons of shops you could throw you know step out of one and walk into another especially here in whittier uh th there's so many shops here in whittier amazing shops uh my barbershop american vintage barbershop uh, god bless his soul late carlos uh, gomez uh but 
Uh, I think you forgot to say tip top. No, there's tons. <laughs> there's Uptown Barbers. I mean, uh, there's an, another one that just opened. Um, sometimes I can't even keep up. Yeah, yeah, that uh, one. Sweden. Actually, we looked Sweden in, in here with in in my community here in Whittier. I think we last the last we looked. There's about twenty shops. Fuck. Twenty shops. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. is that, and it's it's. There's obviously enough people to get their cut haircut. Yeah, just around. this block alone on your one block. Yeah, if yeah. every dude on this one block, all four sides, mm -hmm. went to one barber shop, that's enough clientele for two to three people. Oh, and they're busy. <clears throat> I mean, they're busy. Not everybody takes appointments in some of these shops. Uh, I know Uptown, uh, they, they'll they have people waiting an hour or two. Yeah. You go on a Saturday morning, but it, but that's here in Southern California. So in Mexico. It's the same. You know, to you tell, tell me about it. What, what's it like? Huh. Well, in Mexico, uh, we, got a, we start have a lot of barber shops. Mm -hmm. But the thing in Mexico or in Monterey is that they are just open a barber just for get money, like everyone, you know? But they don't have the 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 love of barbering like a lot of people have here in, in, in California. They just open the, the, the shop just with with no with no with no knowledge about the barbering, mm -hmm. so they had just the money to open the shop. So that's why I don't like the kind of barbering that they are open. They open it like a business. Yeah, they open like a business. A business. Well, that's Which, good for you. Yeah, I <laughs> it know. Makes you look better. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. know. So there is a few barbers in Monterey, like us, like a, a true barber traditional. But are yeah, guys, are you guys friends or rivals or? Um, no, we're just friends. We know each other. Yeah. You don't you don't go like vandalizer stuff and no call them putos and no 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 you know you know there's a funny story um a barber shop a third uh, uh, he's act he was a second generation he is a second generation barber in uh, in Ireland uh, Waldorf barbershop and um, Liam Liam I can't remember his last name is escaping me right now but his father was a barber and his father's a barber what maybe in the early 1900s. And there's a story of, uh, you know, everybody talks about barber love, right? Right, right. And like Tim's talking about rivalry. And the, it, the Liam's father would send Liam when he was a little kid and his friend, he'd pay him, I don't know, a nickel or a quarter, whatever the hell. And he'd pay him to go stand at the in front of the other, the, the, the competition shop with the rag with red paint and put it on their neck <laughs> and say that they got cut at that barber shop. Oh, that's to, rad. You know, <laughs> to, to, to deter customers away. <laughs> I mean, but but because, you that's know, ba ba barbering is, is he, like, he, like um, Damien was saying, it, there's some that are opening it up as a business. Do you guys look at it as a lifestyle, a culture, a profession? What do you guys look at barbering as? Como ve la barbería como un un estilo de vida, una cultura, profesión. Profesión. Yo creo que un poco de los tres. Sí. Well, Alex said that he, he lives the barbering like a lifestyle, culture, professional. Yeah, to me, it's like a a, a lifestyle, you know. I like the customer service, like um, how I trade my customers. So I, I like to speak a lot with my customer to know to know them, what they do. So that's why the, the, I like the barbering to know a lot of people, just to to see what's going on in the world, to know people out of, out of country, like team. Mm -hmm. We wanna go to Australia maybe next year. Mm -hmm. So we wanna go everywhere just to know people to do that connection of barbering, because uh, we wanna go to get that connection. Maybe team someday wanna go to Monterey. It's like welcome. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you are in home. So that's that's the the point. Of, it's of, a, it's like a community. You know, yeah, it's, the, it's a global community. Mm. It's not just. Uh, but you know, I, I think for for you guys, I you know, it's to to see what 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 barbering is. What does it mean? What what does it mean to to Alex and to you, Damien, what does it mean? I don't know, I think that is a, a lifestyle. I know, but what is it, what I mean is, okay, so you drop out, you, or you, you you change jobs, right? You have a real job, profession. What is it, architect? architect? Uh, industrial designer. Industrial designer. And so I assume, did you have tattoos back then? Uh, no. So you didn't have any tattoos. And you. so you went to college for it? 
did you go to college for industrial designer oh uh, yeah yeah so so you're five you're, years <laughs> so he's college educated you know and it just probably just like America, if you you your parents support you to go through college. I'm a college graduate. And Tim, Tim is uh, Barber College. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know, and then that's a it's it's a, it's a thing to be proud of because you know for it's such an ancient profession, uh, thousands, a thousand. You guys are what you guys all do up here is a profession that's been for thousands of years. Yeah. Ancient ancient since man has needed to to cut hair since caveman said hey i'm tired of this shag i'm tired of looking like a hippie <laughs> and, and I, you know i want to shave and they, they 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 got the obsidian and made a razor or king tut you know who who uh, wanted a, a a razor buried with them you know and his bar all the pharaohs had barbers buried next to them so they could look good in the afterlife right that's pretty badass yeah i mean i can't think of any other profession you know i don't care what you are cpa or lawyer that the pharaoh or kings had to have you buried next to them you know i mean but in mexico it, or how are tattoos viewed in mexico how is it tattoo yeah i mean do they are, are you viewed as a, a, a normal person or are you viewed as a criminal or are you viewed as a low life well we are like in the middle of of that we are just starting like see people like uh, lawyers or i don't know cops or or i don't know oh, professionals wow. with a tattoo so yeah so it's changing Th yeah it's changing yeah a little a little but it's changing but to me like I have problems with my mom also. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> have problems with my mom now. And, Wait, and your your older brother's here too, right? <clears throat> yeah, he he's with us. He's helping me with the with the media media. Okay, and he's are, he's off camera right now. But uh, what's his name? Eduardo. Eduardo. Eduardo's here off of now. Is Eduardo? Does he have tattoos? Uh, yeah, but just a couple, not not too much. Okay, so the one on the ankle. I'm not sure if that one counts, but <laughs> 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 but uh, we got Damien here, and uh, you know Alex here. He's he's got his neck blasted there, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? Actually, yeah. His, his, his neck. Yeah, actually, actually, we were when we were with Tim, like doing the tattoo thing. Mm -hmm. Alex wanted the tattoo on the. Do on the back of his head. Yeah, on the back <clears throat> of his head. But I don't know. We are trying to not do that. <laughs> I tried to get him to put it on his forehead. <laughs> yeah, it tattoos hurt. He wasn't buying it. What, what do they say? Uh, uh, if they didn't hurt, then everybody would get them. Yeah. Right. Well, you know? they hurt, and everyone seems to be getting them now. Yeah. Right. You know, there's some. There's one guy. Um, I won't put him on blast or, or pull his covers, but there's one guy literally on social media uh, within the span of two years. He went from virgin skin, so no tattoos, and literally from his neck down to his fingers. And I thought, did he get ink poisoning? <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if he knows what he even has on him anymore. You know, most tattoos you get them, like uh, Damon and Alex here, they have these tattoos that actually mean something. They're yeah, like, uh, right? And, and, and Tim, you know, I mean, I've Tim's- been covering them up. You know? <laughs> A couple of them are three times over already. But, but they mean something, you know, you're not gonna yeah. forget. You know what you have on you and then that, that's- do, I guess. Well, something you wanna forget, you know? Yeah, yeah, just right. like, whatever makes me go and hit the bottle, but yeah. you know? Um, but that's the thing, and I think culture for barbering worldwide is an exciting time, but it's finding people that are legitimately doing it, you know? Uh, not going to, to some of these, I mean, they're just posers. I mean, let's just call them what they are, right? They're just, I'm not a barber, I don't pretend to be one, but, I know a real barbershop when I see it. You know, I, I know that some of them are just being opened as businesses. You know, at, I think there's probably more money to be made in a laundromat. Well, at the end of the day, it is a business. Of course. Yeah. You of know. course. You, you have, yeah, you don't, you're not doing it out of the goodness of your heart going, here, everybody just come on in. Well, and, you see a lot of that on the internet. Like, the, <laughs> all that trend of, of, let me see. Just the love and the, the yeah. passion and the, which, which sure, I, I understand, but. At the end of the day, you're not going to do it for free. No, 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 no one works for free unless no. you're, you know, every once in a while, like homeless people come by the shop and I'll give them a free, like if they're cool, I'll give them a smoke. If we start talking, vibing, maybe give them a haircut. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Other than that, you're going to pay up and it's a business and that's a business. At the no, end of, of the course. Day. I, yeah. I wouldn't go into a restaurant and expect a free meal. Right. And be like, well, you're, you're, you're the local restaurant. Well, if you go to Panda Express, they let you try everything first. <laughs> so I always run down the line and try it all. Just tell them, I got my own toothpicks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Load them up. So you don't have to, they cost you nothing at that end. But uh, 
and I think there is a trend though of of and I'm not even sure if they're barbers or if they're male stylists that are going around and cutting homeless people's hair and, right. and and they're posting it like it's cool it's totally cool yeah you know they're doing a service for a homeless person which is bitching you know they're gonna stoke that guy's day out and possibly if that guy's in his right mind maybe help him get a job or but if that's all in your social media feed right. i'm not sure if that's you're really doing it out of the goodness of your heart yeah who's, the, who's just, to tell you, you know? know what i mean because I, I know <laughs> i've been at your shop before and i've seen but you if know, they're not benef you know like I've seen a couple of those uh, pages. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they would make money off it. They're not advertising on there or anything. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but I've I, seen some of those pages, which well, is cool that they're doing it. But yeah, who knows what their motive is? You know, and for me personally, I'm like, if if this is all your feed and and this is your this is your yeah. gim your gimmick. I mean, seriously, at yeah. a certain point, because I know you. I've been at your shop before when yeah, some you know somebody down on their luck. Mm. you know comes by and i've seen you and i'm thinking tim's not snapping a picture and posting it like look i'm gonna cut this guy's hair right in every picture in his feed and this is what tim becomes known for of i'm the homeless barber guy going around cutting in the streets every picture you know to me it's kind of like if you're doing it to inspire hey maybe that's cool that's I, I don't I, like you said we don't know their motives right but it is an interesting trend but going back here to our to our guest so you guys have been here since when when did you guys get here to california uh tuesday tuesday and and obviously you guys flew in yeah we we flew to tijuana and then gone up to to long beach which is tijuana is almost like another country in and of itself right you have like mexico Dude. america and tijuana is like a whole nother country my yeah. friend ryan that just tattooed him <clears throat> they went down there probably six weeks ago to go tattoo some gangbangers that got deported from Fullerton, mm -hmm. not knowing that these guys were who they were. A friend of his is like, hey, let's go tat some friends down there. So they went down there. I guess you can't drink on the street. Mm -hmm. So he was walking down the street like revolution or something next mm -hmm. to a guy he didn't even know <clears throat> that had a beer in his hand mm -hmm. and the paddy wagon pulled up, snatched his ass up and he's probably his size, Ryan grab him stuff him in the back he said it was pitch black all he can see is white eyeballs wow and they chained him to the roof you know everyone's pulling out their dough trying to get him out <clears throat> cash the cops out they said fuck off they shut the door kept him drove what? around for 45 minutes let him out shook him down took all his shit and told him to split damn so it's fucking not yeah so it is there. another world it yeah. is it's it's it's, yeah, it's it is. <laughs> like i said we have mexico and then there's uh tijuana, tijuana which is uh <laughs> Baja California, and I mean, we should just drop the California off of that because I don't know how much it associates with us. But you know, I just went to Hong Kong's for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard about it my whole life, <clears throat> and uh, it was it was me and my wife, mm -hmm. and we just went down to Revolution to go get tacos and do a little shopping. Just walked across the border or whatever. I started having a few beers, and uh, I was like, "Hey, let's go." You know, and she would, she, I've, uh, in the eight years we've been together, I've never heard her say a cuss word. She says mm -hmm. like F word or B word. She's never <laughs> so smoked she doesn't a cigarette. Say it. She just, she's, yeah. yeah. One letter. So I'm like, hey, let's, uh, let's go check out this place, Hong Kong's. It's a world famous strip club. She's like, absolutely not. What, like, why, why are we, why would we do that? Mm -hmm. I just kept chipping away at it, chipping away at it. Finally, she goes, okay, we'll have one beer. And if it gets weird, before that beer's done, we're out of there. Mm -hmm. So inside, I was like, "Fuck yeah, I want to check this place out." Like my buddies, we're in there. the door, right? We're in the door. Yeah. yeah. So we get in there, <clears throat> and it's not a strip club; it's a straight whorehouse, <laughs> like a strip club. You know, they're working the yeah, pole, yeah, yeah. and you know, you're getting lap dances. There's a couple poles in there, but they're just kind of slowly walking around them. Mm -hmm. And there's about 250 chicks in there. <laughs> And I didn't know that. I thought it was a strip club. <clears throat> I knew you can pull chicks yeah, out yeah, there and yeah, bang yeah. them, but so it's just chicks walking around, and you can pretty much point at one or tell her to come here. Yeah. And there's a motel upstairs. So I'm sure. I'm, and, and your wife's oh, reaction was. Oh, the best part about it, which it, I I wish we could have stayed there longer, obviously. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, there's a, like a long stage, kind of waist high, with bubbles all over it and soap. 
And there's okay. girls sliding back and forth. What? And and so yeah, chairs all around it, and you can yeah, just yeah. do it. You know. <laughs> So we just had a booth and just kind of watching. So, so, so your wife actually, you know, stayed there for a minute. For a minute oh, a, yeah. a, after, and we just had, you know, they sat us where they could. Mm -hmm. Just so happens we're in front of that waist high stage, not okay. on the stage, but on the booth. So she had seen enough, and she said, "Let's get the fuck out of here." <laughs> <laughs> so that, I mean, since you guys have been here in California, what what have you any crazy things? I mean, any like man, I can't believe you know I just woke up in that guy's yard or whatever, you know anything or has it just been you know uh, a legitimate you know business trip? Mm -hmm. Don't okay, worry, your I, mom. I mean, I'm sure your mom. I don't know if she'll be too. I, I think it's the <laughs> any incriminating stuff. I think it's is. Is this guy next to me? <laughs> it's Tim. Yeah, yeah. So it's been Tim. Uh, uh, his debauchery has has gotten to you. Is that what that is? Yeah, I mean, he's a nice guy, <laughs> but but he's fucking crazy, man. It's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, he's. I mean, you know, um, I think that Compton was a a good place to be with Tim, with the Mexican guys. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Well, we're everywhere. We're everywhere. They were, like, yeah. yeah, they we're, were a bit everywhere. worried when I said where we were going. It's like, let's go to this taco shop. Mm -hmm. It's right on uh, Rosecrans and Long Beach Boulevard. I always go there. I, I go with my family. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sometimes I'll go by myself because that's how heaven. <clears throat> that's where all the prostitutes are. <laughs> <laughs> and I love just sitting in the window eating tacos and like, watching hookers go by yeah so so it's a common theme obviously you know it's like a thing of just this like this it's meat just, market right I, no i just like i don't know i just like this taco place and especially because like there's hookers walking by you know so it's <laughs> it's the whole vibe so i tell these guys we're going to compton to get tacos and he's like okay is, is it is it pretty bad there or because they've seen it on television <laughs> and he's out of compton and, and, is that what it was yeah yeah but uh no, we got a good pass, and I got <clears throat> lots of friends out there, so showed them a good time. Yeah, that was a good, a good trip to Compton. So, what has been your each of your favorite parts of your visit here in California? ¿Cuál ha sido tu tu mejor lugar donde has ido? Compton. <laughs> See, it's because Alex is a fan from. And of course, I had to put Easy E on where we were in Compton. From Easy E, is that what? What? Yeah, well, uh, actually, Alex liked the uh, likes too much the movie <coughs> like <coughs> the Blood In Blood Out, <coughs> the Sangre por Sangre. Mm -hmm. So that's why we start that trip with with Team because we tell Team that we want to go to the Del Pino, mm -hmm. the bike where is the movie. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so Team. Take us to the Compton, to the Green Pants, right? Mm. Green Pants. So Green Pants, yeah. Green Pants. So that's Alex. That's where they like, like Compton and all this. So it is, it, and what about you? What was your your favorite spot here? Mm. Besides here, I mean, you could tell me. I love being here. This is the best thing I've done all the whole time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm. I'm not gonna. You know, I'm not gonna argue with you. <laughs> I don't know. I think <clears throat> it's. I don't know. We're, we're being in Palos Verdes, I guess is the name, mm -hmm. on the hill. Yeah, oh, by nice the by the there. coast. That that was a, a a nice view, like. The park? I don't know, or it was a park, but it was a parking and a, a view, like like you can yeah. see all the coast. Yeah, it's beautiful. So that's the part that I love because I see like like a, like the coast and the, and the guys surfing and mm -hmm. all the stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think it's Palos Verdes, that place is like a good good place to be. Okay. Yeah, that's big dollar homes up there. Yeah, awesome. but it's because you, you got that view. Have you taken to any other shops or any anything or or? Mm, what, what? No, when we <clears throat> when we le I, I this is only the second day I've seen them, but okay. that day we left and went straight to get lunch and then made our way up to L.A. and uh, by the time we got back, it was late. So, no. You know, I, I point. I pointed out a couple. Okay. Like that, we were driving past. Yeah, you're like, don't go to those fuckers right there. No, no, no. <laughs> those guys are assholes. No. Nah. Um, no, you know, and the no, nah, Tim's not that way. But um, what what are what what do you think in Mexico? Each of you, 
what what led to the revival in Mexico? What what made? I'm, I'm going to step out and burn one for a second. Go on ahead, then. We'll be here waiting for you. All right. Um, what what led to the revival in Mexico? Well, I think the professional that is the barber in here. Mm -hmm. Well, the guys that we met are so professionals. So how they do, how how they 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 um how they how do you say manejan la tienda uh, how they run their business yeah how they run the business mm -hmm. i think that to me like a owner is that's the that's the thing they want to go to monterey and do it right there because we are doing good but you know you have to go to other places just to see if you are go doing good or if you have to do something more so that's the thing that that I want to go to Mexico and 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 start doing right there. What about pomade? How how is the pomade out there? Is there a lot of pomade companies? Is there? And yeah. which one's your favorites? Each of you. I want to hear each of you answer on this. Uh, to me, I guess it's Layrite. Layrite. Alex. Yeah. Alex also loves Layrite, but yeah, the all American pomades, uh, like in California, like. Layrite, Suavecito, uh, Steadfast, I guess, mm -hmm. is from here, I don't know. Prospectors and Imperia. I think pretty much almost all yeah. pomades. There's very few pomades that are made in another state or not in Southern California. Yeah, so they they are in Mexico now, but now it's, it's, it's like um, hard to, to buy it because mm -hmm. for the dollar... So it's expensive in Mexico. You can get it, mm -hmm. but it's expensive. So some people or your customer, something sometimes they don't have the money to pay it. You know. Well, so, how, how much is a haircut? How much do you guys charge for a haircut? Well, we we are like very cheap <laughs> because we are on the on the place that we are is not a rich place. Mm -hmm. So in pesos is 160 pesos. In dollars is like eight dollars. Ten dollars, something like that. Yeah, but in peso, what's the peso? One peso to what is it? To what's what's it to the dollar right now? It's twenty pesos is one dollar. So yeah, twenty pesos is one American dollar. So it's it's the peso is really weak. Yeah, it's really weak. So that's why you can charge or you can more money, you know. But the things down in Mexico is now is is complicated, you know. Mm -hmm. So you have to sometimes you have to help. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your people. You be in the community. Yeah. That's what I told you that the the barbering to me, like an owner, yeah, it's a business. I, I need a money, you know. But if I have the time, if I had the opportunity to do something with what's going on in Mexico, maybe it's that. Like giving a a, a, a service, a good service for a good price. Mm -hmm. So that's and that's what a real barbershop is, being part of the community. Yeah. Because um, you guys, do you guys live near your barbershop? Yeah. Well, I live like 15 minutes. And what about Alex? Yeah. ¿Cómo cuánto vives de la, de la barber, de Bravos? Como una hora. Well, he lives oh, like wow. an hour. Wow. So it's a drive. Yeah. Wow. Because being, being, being in your community, even an hour away, is important because... Your customers, you want to see them, right? Yeah. When you go to the store or... Well, the, the good thing in Bravos is that we are located in downtown Monterrey. So it's the middle of the city. Mo Monterrey is the capital, right? Yeah. Of, of the, Nuevo León, of your of state. Of Nuevo León, yeah. And we got a, a different cities around the Monterrey. Mm -hmm. And there is like five cities around the Monterrey. Okay. So we are the middle. So some people that maybe lives on the side east side mm -hmm. and goes to the job like to the west side and browse is in the middle okay maybe when when they come from the from the work they stop in bravos oh okay so that's why we have people from everywhere in monterey and that's why i told you that we are not in the rich place so we take a lot of different people maybe a rich boy can go to the bravos and give us a tip like this is eight dollars you know yeah, yeah. but there you go. There is fifteen dollars to go. So that's how we we get that balance okay. with the money. Well, yeah, you have to. I mean, being you can't be. You know, you have to adjust to your community. Yeah. Uh, t 
Tim apparently survived his his uh, smoking addiction. His, <laughs> I wasn't going to call it that, but I guess if he wants to go ahead and uh, call it that, uh, they say find something you love and let it kill you. I guess it's cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I've had a real good time. You know, I, I'm I'm thankful to Tim here for you know his his uh, constant support of us and. Uh, you know, he, he's definitely um, made sure that we're in the loop. You know, if something's going on and, and he thinks it's a good fit, you know, he reaches out. He's a, he's a real good friend, and people should really make sure to check out Syndicate uh, Barbershop uh, on Instagram. It's at Syndicate Barbershop. Mm-hmm. And Tim also has one at Tim Syndicate. And then I also have the company Leisure Label. Leisure Label. With a friend. Yeah, you know um, what? We're, we'll, uh, we'll talk after this episode about... Uh, getting you on a, a future at, one at leisure label on instagram at leisure label and i believe your wife also has a business yeah honey bunny intimates she yes. makes bras and lingerie for women hey you know i which yeah. is rad because like <laughs> girls <clears throat> it's an easy business for her as far as like content because mm-hmm. girls love to show themselves off especially on instagram or social media take sexy photos and stuff exactly so when she sells a bra or lingerie, they send her photos of them in the bra. <laughs> so it's constantly direct messaging titties. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, so I get like first view of the shot before it goes yeah, you, on Yeah, you got to inspect to make sure it's worthy. The <laughs> yeah. quali- you're looking for quality. Make sure that it's not distorted yeah. images. Or- I'm quality control for exactly. the tits. Exactly. So yeah, make sure you check out uh, uh, Syndicate, uh, Leisure Label, and Honey Bunny Intimates, mm. and uh, Bravos on um, at uh, on uh, Instagram and Facebook. Is it the same? Yeah, Bravos dot mx. Bravos dot mx, and you guys have a website too, right? And uh, Facebook. Oh no, website. Oh no, no. Right now, no, it's not. It's not working. Okay, so you guys used to. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, hey, that's that's quite all right. But uh, I'd like to thank these uh, folks for coming in. These gentlemen. Uh, make sure that you're supporting. You know, I mean. Barbering is a worldwide lifestyle. It's a worldwide profession, and to find people that are representing and you know they're they're not they're not trying to say they're the ones that got the best way. They're looking towards the barber community by traveling. Not only are they here in Southern California now, but they have goals to to travel to. You said Australia, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but there's other places, right, that they want to tap into, and and that's what barbering's about. Is saying is. We're not the only ones, and we're not the first ones, and we're sure in the hell not the last ones. Right. Yeah. And uh, so I'd like to thank Damien and Alex. Muy agradecidos to have you guys here. Es un honor. Uh, and I'm really thankful for them and their time. And for Eduardo, who's off camera, uh, making sure not to take a full picture of me, but he's, he's off camera here. <laughs> I'm sure he's got a couple. Uh, yeah, he probably does. <laughs> That's all right. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, I'll survive. Yeah, right. But uh, so that'll do it for this episode of so The So are you Lodge not Cast. on camera right now? Yeah, slightly, slightly. I'm off camera. It, it, it's, so it's, you want to stay kind of out of the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, but there's still lights I here. Mean, so. Can I see that nice Pendleton right now? <laughs> oh, no, yeah, you could see. You okay. could, there, there's a total side profile. Okay. Yeah, uh, but uh, anyway, so that'll do it for this episode of the Lodgecast. So make sure that you subscribe to us. Uh, we're on Google Play, iTunes, and on the website, gentlemensavenue.com forward slash the Lodgecast. So until next time, be well and take care. Later. Bye. Thank you, Mr. Ram.